Hello and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools. Season 2, Episode 24. Hello and welcome back to the Education on Fire podcast with me, Mark Taylor. This is part two of my ICT with Mr P episode. Um, and during episode one, um, we talked about how Lee um, became a teacher um, and then did some PPA um, cover within his school when, when his family life changed and he had triplets at home, which obviously made a big difference to his life. Um, and how from there he also then expanded out and was supported to go and give um, ICT training um, to schools, which is, he can now do all, all around the country. Um, we finished episode one talking about how children are using technology at home and, and, and the balance between family life and being able to switch the switch the screen off and actually be part of uh, a normal conversation. And, and we've got to sort of just carry that on now um, and take us into how we actually use technology in terms of being a creator and creating content and the positive things of that, as well as also just being a passive consumer. So this is Lee Parkinson and part two of ICT with Mr. P. I do love the technology to bits. I think it's great and, you know, I promote it all the time. But uh, for me, there's, there's two different ways in which I, I think you use technology. You use technology either as a consumer or a creator. So when we're talking about being a consumer with technology, it's things like, you know, you're watching videos, you're watching YouTube videos, you're watching Netflix, you know, you're reading ebooks, you're listening to music, you're browsing the web, doing research, that sort of thing, playing video games. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's, there's a place for that. There's a place for that. Uh, sort of in school and outside of school you know um, what I find with a lot of schools now is that that tends to be the only way they're using the technology so you know when it comes to teachers using the iPads it's so oh, we're going to do some research on the internet or we're going to um, you know we've got this maths game that you can play don't get me wrong they're obviously really useful tools my, my issue comes when that's the only way in which the schools are using that technology so what I try and do with a lot of my training when I speak to, te- you know, uh, when I'm in school with teachers, they say, yeah, that's great. We can, uh, you know, we can use our te- the technology for that. But what we want to try and fo- where it starts to really transform learning is when both you and your pupils are creating content. So you're not just browsing the web, you're publishing to the web. You're not just listening to music, you're composing music. You're not just reading ebooks, you're writing ebooks. You're not just playing video games, you're designing your own video games. You're not watching videos, you're creating videos. And it's that sort of side of the technology that really starts to transform learning, but it also changes the mentality in the teachers then. So the men, you know, you get a lot of teachers who, and I get them all the time. I get the messages, you know, tweets. Have you got an app for this? Have you got an app for fractions? Have you got an app for ancient Greece? This and that. Whereas teachers who see the creative side of the technology and the list of apps you can use for that, you know, uh, it becomes then, oh, we're doing fractions. How can I use explain everything for that? How can I use Adobe Spark Video? How can I use Shadow Puppets? How can I use it? So it really uh, gets the teachers then to see a completely different way in which the tra- technology can transform the learning that's happening in the classroom and give children the opportunities to share, demonstrate, explain, express their ideas in in creative ways uh, about absolutely anything rather than, you know, looking at the consumer side and it being specific to a uh, an objective or a particular area. The creative apps are the ones that you can say, right, we're doing math, we could use it for that, we could do in English, we're doing PE, we're doing science. So that's where I try and focus a lot of the technology and um, with my kids, it tends to be a lot more of the consumer side because they're still quite young, uh, which is, you know, watching the watching Netflix or the Sky Go app. Uh, so we try and limit that. Um, and then when I get opportunities, we are being sort of quite creative and the children make their own little videos and they talk through what they know and, and that sort of thing. And and that's, that's key, isn't it? I mean, I, th- I think it really the whole the whole being creative side of it and and the technology we have in iPads especially and that sort of thing they're, they're just the latest tool they're just a way of being able to express yourself and share what you're doing in in a new way and 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 yeah. specifically in iPads i mean it's that kind of your um sort of tool, tool of choice rather than using laptops and things these days or does it just depend on what resources the school's got or or, or how, how do you sort of see the difference between those devices yeah I mean, personal pref- preference now it is. I am I am a bit of an Apple, an Apple geek, I suppose. Um, 
you know, when I got my first iPad, it then got me to get my first MacBook, and I've never looked back, really. Um, but the tool, those creative tools that I've mentioned there, they tend to be the apps or the programs that are available on every device. You know, so when we're talking about things like Seesaw, Explain Everything, Book Creator, you know, you can get those on 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 any sort of device you've got. So um, that's where I again I try and focus because I, I can't guarantee that every school I go into are going to have you know uh, iPads or uh, tablets. So it's sort of saying, well, actually, you know, th th these are the tools you can get on a a any device that can sort of transform transform learning, and, and that's where we should be focusing. That's where I think just generally education needs to sort of refocus its goals uh, and, and actually encouraging that creativity. And, uh, you know, because I think nowadays, I think our education system hasn't, I'm going quite political now. I don't know if this is, the, I should be going this way, but I was reading an article the other, the other week that was talking about how our education system, you know, it was built for the industrial age. And in, now in 2017, we're sort of post that. And we're very slow to sort of change and adapt to the way the world's working. Um, and technology is at the heart of, you know, ev you know, every business and even the medical field. You look at the, I was reading the other day about how virtual reality now is, is, is helping people who a few years ago due to injuries or whatever, wouldn't have dreamed of being able to walk. They're now able, they're sort of reteaching themselves how to walk through virtual reality or using 3D printing to actually print body parts to use in, transplants and things like that so that's where technology is getting us and that's where you know we're going with technology yet in 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 so many schools we're still sort of stuck in the dark ages because the system is very much tailored towards you know testing results and sats and and that sort of thing which is quite frustrating when you know for a lot of children that's not the way that that's you know education is not a one-size-fits-all that's um, what i think I, I think I think you're absolutely right, and um, and I could have this conversation for the rest of the day, which <laughs> wouldn't yeah. necessarily be, yeah. be, 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 be uh, very very good for everyone listening because they would have uh, um, been through their entire day by that point already. But I, I think yeah. what you say there is is absolutely key, and 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 it, and it's why it's why I started the podcast. It's why I was so so pleased that you would come on because. Um, my starting point was kind of while there are many of us who may want the education system to be different um, and there are very many um, good reasons why that would be the case it's very difficult to do that either on your own or or for it to happen overnight and I think there are mm -hmm. there's, there's such a wave of people now who, who think exactly the same as you've just expressed and and you're sort of a, a demonstrating exactly how that can be different because you obviously as you've explained you know how you've done that in your school and taking it out into different schools and teaching other teachers how to do it and yeah. and this podcast is here to sort of to, to share it to even more people and so they can then get in contact with you and, and and share it as well so it is just that moving it bit by bit and i think and as that sort of as that sort of juggernaut keeps going it, it, it is changing slightly yeah and i mean i mean in our school we're nowhere near the the, the polished article you know we, we, we're nowhere near where i want us to be as a whole school but we're definitely on the right track and i think sort of uh society as a whole we've, we've become very impatient with things we want things to change straight away we want to you know come back off a course and implement an idea that's gonna you know work straight away and that's that it, education especially it's not going to work like that so it is you know even though we've had tech, you know the, the sort of mobile technology now for a good five years we're still not quite where I want us to be, but we are on the right, you know, we are on the right track. So it's schools just understanding that it isn't it isn't a you know an overnight process. Process Rome wasn't built in a day. That's what they say, don't they? Um, but it's just understanding that there's so much more to education than getting children to pass a a, a sort of SATS test. And, and and I think the problem that we've got just one one more. Uh, and, you know, is that because so much is now based on these results, because these tests now define, you know, your status as a school and things like performance related pay have come in, you know, schools sort of narrow everything down to them. Whereas, you know, what I th my approach is, well, if you actually focus on the children, if you play to their interests, if you engage and inspire them and make their learning purposeful, the quality of the work they produce will tick all those boxes but what you get, what you get extra is you're developing the children as a whole child. They're growing up now, 
passionate and fulfilled with with you know uh, a passion that they want to to follow and they, they, they see the opportunities and the careers that might then you know come from that sort of uh, approach um, rather than it all being down to ticking boxes passing tests and then the children then don't really see the purpose in that that's you know I remember when I was back I was dreadful at exams I was awful you know it was really the coursework that got me through my GCSEs because I was very very much sort of creative and discussion and talking and and that sort of thing but when it came to the formal exams I was I was sort of dreadful um but I'm lucky in that I was able to then turn my skill that my skill set into something where I'm like I say I'm, I'm able to you know speak in front of x amount of teachers and, and and share those ideas in a way that they can understand them and go back to their school and use them so you know it's 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 trying to get a across the teachers that yeah we do we do ask to still tick these boxes but there's ways in which you can do it that doesn't neglect the children's uh sort of passion and enthusiasm and uh and that sort of thing really yeah and and i think it's that insight and that leap of faith just to know that if the if you focus on the children first and give them all those skills like you say the rest of it will just take care of itself because it, it's and experiences happy. yeah given those experiences and you know, given the opportunity, I, I just wish we were in a system where the children were coming into school and using better technology than they have at home. You know, we did a, I did a course the other, the other week with um, a guy called John Chippendall, who's a primary school uh, teacher in oh, it's the other side of Manchester. Uh, he's on he's on Twitter at Dr Chips underscore, and we do a sort of computing day together because I focus more on the ICT and the digital literacy, and he does the computer science. And uh, as part of the course, you got a Crumbles robotics kit because uh, so, he, he's he's really into sort of his physical computing. And we just gave the teachers sort of a good forty five minutes to an hour to sort of create something with this with this compute this crumbles kit and we're talking teachers who never met each other before and I, I stood back and i just said to, to john said this is what should be happening in classrooms up and down the country because not only are you getting the children to be creative and and develop those problem solving skills the communication the collaboration that was going on we just set them a task of saying right you've got to make some sort of Move, move something linked to a movie as a way of advertising it so that the, you know with the crumbles kit where you can have flashing lights it's a very simple it's, it's very much sort of a similar to the um raspberry pi sort of thing um and yeah just seeing the teachers with with smiles on their faces just discussing and and, and just and i was just thinking this is what we should be doing so much more of in this day and age where you know those sort of interpersonal skills are being developed um yeah it was great i, I, I was i was and, and and then we sort of streamed what the, the teachers had created on facebook and you could just see as they were talking about it how proud these teachers were of what they would created in that short amount of time and you think well if that's what the teachers are doing your children are going to be exactly the same if not more so and and I think also it's the fact that they get to feel different, and it's the feeling of how how you're working in that environment, which really does really does help, doesn't it? And and the other yeah. thing, and the other irony of this, of course, is the fact that there are many businesses out there that are absolutely crying out for all of those skills because they know that's what they need to be successful in this modern sort of post sort of industrial age. Um, oh, and, absolutely. And and yet. Um, that's not filtering through into the curriculum. And it, the, the big question for me is often, is there a reason why that, that it's not being embraced if it's what businesses are actually asking for, why the, why the education system is slow to catch up or, or whether it's actually being sort of tampered down, you know? It, it, it's interesting you mentioned, I was on, a, I did a, um, an ICT conference in Hull last week and uh, the keynote at the end of the day was a guy called Richard Jerva. If you've come across his work. I haven't, no. No, uh, you can follow him on Twitter. And he was talking about this. He was talking about sort of the change in, and he was he was mentioning that a lot of the, the a lot of the countries now who are at the top of this the PISA scale. He was he was talking about the OECD and the PISA scale now are sort of changing from the academic model of education and and looking at it as a rounded sort of. Uh, in, sort of giving them those developing those skills and giving them those experiences and uh, he mentioned an OECD study that they did I can't remember what the year was where it was all about sort of the, um, uh, the, 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 the sort of uh, what I'm thinking of here 
uh, sort of businesses and, and, and work side of things. And some of the conclusions, I've just brought up a picture of that. He said um, the problem with a lot of the education systems who weren't um, sort of making that transition over into the workplace was that there was an over-reliance on formal qualifications rather than actual skills. Um, the focus should be more on the importance of interpersonal skills over routine cognitive which is, you know, what what we're push, pushing more for than anything else. You know, ticking boxes, remember this, remember this for the test you're going to sit. Vital that people can learn uh, to adapt, sorry, vital that people can learn to adapt and change closer links between the world of work and education, um, which I think just links perfectly into what we were just saying there. Then in that, you know, these are things that we should be making more of, yet we seem in some ways to be moving further away from you know, I got a, I, I had a I had a message of a teacher the other day where uh, it was well, actually, it wasn't the other day. It was a, a while ago. It was after the Sats last year, where a child um, they sent it back. It was the Spag test last year, and he didn't get the mark for a question where he curved the comma to the right instead of the left. And I couldn't believe it because I thought I was thinking, well, when is he? Let's be realistic here. When in his life is he ever going to need to hand write a comma again for someone else to read? <laughs> that's very and that's true. That's not me now. That's not me now sort of saying stop teaching handwriting. No, of course, it's an important skill. It puts a deem a child a failure because they don't curve it to the left because he was actually left-handed, the same as I am. You know, I just think he's, he's ridiculous. I do, I do, you know. But anyway, that's a different <laughs> different discussion. <laughs> exactly, different issue, yeah. yeah. Next episode. Um, so so all, all those things you've been chatted about are absolutely fantastic. And so so for people listening who want to find out more... Um, it, where's the where's the best place for the, for them to go? Is it your website where they can see the inset and the training and the projects that you have? Yeah, I mean for the the examples, I mean what I try and do is as often as I can I'll blog. Uh, you know what we're doing in class, and 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 that goes on the blog, Mr. Parkinson, ict.blogspot.co.uk. So there's a whole wealth of practical ideas and lesson ideas, and you know uh, I, I have been told before that I probably share too much on there, but you know I'm a teacher at heart, and that's what teachers do: sharing's caring. So you know, there's um, last time I checked, over two million visits to the to the blog, which is uh, which is incredible. So yeah, so there's plenty of ideas on there. Uh, there's information on the blog there about training as well um, and, and the courses that I'm doing. So I've got quite a few courses between now and the end of the year. Uh, some just myself, one, ones with Dr. Chips that I mentioned before, but also the uh, another course I run with um, a guy called John Murray, who is a reading and spelling trainer. Uh, and we do a course together. I absolutely love that course. It's, uh, it's called Improving Reading and Writing Through Popular Children's Media. Um, and we just feel it's it's a really insightful way in which you can embrace uh, other forms of media, music, and um, you know, film and and, and Im images and things like that, but with a, a sort of tech centric approach, you know, putting text at the heart of everything. Um, so yeah, so that we've got details of all of them are on there, and then uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at ict underscore mr p. Same on Instagram at ICT underscore Mr. P. Uh, the Facebook page, uh, that's probably the most popular social media platform I've got now. Um, I think just because I try and share sort of funny, insightful little videos about life as a teacher, which, um, yeah, sort of came from nowhere, but it's just the response of other teachers. I, I love getting messages from them that say, you know, I've had a real tough day, but I then watch this video and it's just, and I think what, What's been great about that Facebook page for me is how many teachers who might feel isolated or might feel that they've not got the support they need can come to that page and they can see that they're not the only one. You know, and I think there's lots of groups on Facebook, and this is what I say to teachers all the time is, you know, embrace social media yourself as a teacher, not only as a form of CPD, but as a network of being able to speak to other people that might go through the same difficulties that you might be facing who who can share insight for or give you support and 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 it is just incredible for that i think and teaching as a profession it, 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 we are very special in the way that we do look after each other we might never have met you know never have met people but we, we're willing to share ideas willing to you know share resources because we're all in this together we're all fighting the good fight we're all in this education game for 
for the children, aren't we? So absolutely, and 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 what I'm what I'm really liking about this podcasting journey is the fact that I I've, I've had exactly this conversation with um Kelly Long back in season one about you know using social media and being online and those presences about because you can find the support you need no matter where you are in your journey as a teacher because you might have great support within the four walls of your school but you might not but there are thousands of yeah. teachers out there who are really supportive and willing people on for because exactly like you said the caring and the, and the inspiration they want for their children and you can find whatever you need you just have to put yourself out there and, and embrace it yeah it sort of puts cpd in your hands i think so when it comes to what your school provides i sometimes say this on my training you know you guys haven't decided to bring me here it's been the slt uh, and i'm hoping everyone's going to enjoy the session but ultimately you might think i'm all right with technology it's science that i'm struggling with or it's getting me head around this spag curriculum or whatever it might be where so utilizing the internet gives that gives puts that cpd in your hands and says right i can follow him i can go on that website i can ask this question i can you know build my own confidence in in and and you know thinking back to when i started as a teacher only 10 years ago there was nowhere near that level of support out there and it is it is such a, a useful tool again and, and this is why we need to be embracing it as much as possible both as as a professional cpd tool but also with our children you know i see lots of teachers who post uh questionnaires and uh you know linked to uh data handling lessons in maths and you'll always get teachers willing to give up a minute or two to answer them and uh, and yeah, we are. It is, it is such a special, and this is what I love. You know, t- that's why I see myself as a teacher first and foremost, because I think it's one of the best jobs in the world, and I'm very, very proud to call myself a teacher. I think it's an absolute gift to do the job that we do. Um, so yeah, in fact, I had a, I'll tell you one nice little story to finish it off. I because uh, I, t- you know, I, I just don't think we get told enough what an amazing job teachers do on the whole with you know conditions that they're working in now. Uh, and I always like to say, and anyone who's listening who's a teacher, keep going, keep doing what you're doing because you do amazing things. And I guarantee the children you're working with day in, day out, you're having an amazing impact on their their learning and their lives. But I had a, I had a moment like this the other week where I went into a uh, I went into a garage to get some lunch before I went to, to a school. And it was a, a, a dad of a child I taught nine years ago now, I think. Um, and when, these, when his lad was in my class, he'd, he'd, he'd only recently lost his mum to cancer which was um you know which was tough on him he really struggled with it um but I got on really really well with him me and him had a real real good relationship he was really into his football loved United and that sort of thing and and it was maths that he really struggled with at the beginning of the year he really had um you know really sort, sort of struggled with maths but something happened that year where it just sort of clicked and he started making so much progress and uh and, and it carried on into year six and, and so on. And I said to his dad, I said, oh, so what's he up to nowadays? And his dad said, I was training to be an accountant. And honestly, I just, <laughs> I, I lost it. I just thought, you know, that's the impact teachers can have. And, you know, outside of teaching and, you know, when we look at the, the, the politics side of things, we're not anywhere near as, as supported or trusted or, you know, valued as much as we should be, but with our children, where it matters, you know, we do make that difference. So, I think that's right, and and it's, I think it's a really, really important thing to remember, isn't it? At the heart of of why we get up each day, and and especially when you're then going into school, that each day you do make a difference, and everything that you say and everything that you want to impart is having a a big impact. And and if you if everything you say comes from there, I think you can only do great things. And it's a really, oh, yeah. really important thing to remember. Um, well, it sounds, it sounds like you're doing fantastic stuff and there's so much, oh, great, great, so much great resources you've got out there that you said, and we'll make sure oh, that on the, um, on the education on fire.com website, there's links to everything that we've talked about so that people can go there and, and, and find, and find what they need. And, um, it's it's been fantastic speaking to you and and um and oh, no, thank you very much really really inspirational yeah really re- really really great stuff and um and we must keep in contact and we can carry on the conversation yeah. as 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 everything develops yeah brill sounds great thank you very much thank you for inviting me um it's been a pleasure thank you cheers thank you for listening to the education on fire podcast for more information please go to educationonfire.com.